Hello, hello, good morning family, how are you doing? Um, I hope to see you soon, um, please start joining and uh, we're in the, our weekly video. I believe this week's um, video is going to be really interesting. I'm sure a lot of people is going to have concerns about this uh, topic and um, it's something I really need you to understand. I know every week I uh, explain this uh, situation with the stretching of the sleeve and uh, I know some people ask me about the female hormones, some people uh, are more interested than others because um, they have polycystic ovarian syndrome. So um, let's give it some time. We are waiting for our family members to join. Um, remember, we're, we're trying to gather as many people as we can. So. But don't worry, if you are busy, remember this is going to be posted in the group if you can't watch it live. Hello Pamela, good morning to you too. And Jennifer, how are you? Yes, this is live, I promise. Um, I can't welcome all of you because remember um, that we normally are a lot, but well, in this case you are directly um, greeting me, so I have to, to do the same. Lita. Good morning, good morning Julia and Jeannie, Jeannie, and now I can't pronounce your name. <laughs> and I'm glad you don't have a drain anymore. Remember the drains are normally for major or more complex surgeries like biopsies. that are more, probably more dangerous, a little riskier than sleep, and revision surgeries. So 95% or more of our patients needs no drains. Um, Angela, Angelica, good morning. Anita Sanderson, good morning. Kenya, Jody, Sandra, hello, good morning, all of you. And <laughs> well, it's funny that you that you call it adopting you, because uh, some of my patients in the past had mentioned that, like I I, I uh, normally get orphan patients, you know, with no support. Well, we we do. We do. We we try to do um, to help some people. Mm, we don't have lots of them because well, I don't know. But uh, most of, of of our members are my patients. But thousand steps. Okay. Well, someone it's try really try. Oh, I'm glad, Jeannie, and uh, congratulations. Okay, we're seventeen people now. Remember that we are normally 30, 40, so I think we're gonna wait a little more. And don't worry, Tamaria. <laughs> okay, well, let's give it a try with, uh, what do you think, 20 people? Well, we are 20 people now, okay. <laughs> good morning, Terry, how are you doing? Paula, good morning. Okay, okay. I think we're almost ready. We're almost ready because I believe this is a really interesting video. Chevas Terry C. Charlotte, right? Hello, how are you doing? Good morning. And Shannon, okay, well, oh, we have almost 30 people now. Dr. Andrea, good morning. I always gonna like that. Good morning. Paula, Nikindra. Kenya, Crystal, okay. Kenya, can you add the importance of hydration to the topic list? Okay, we can talk about hydration, don't worry. Jody. Who's my sister? While we're waiting, does your sister work directly for the plastics doctor and set up consults? She's not my sister, she's my anesthesiologist, but yes, she does. She works directly with plastics. I really don't want to mess with that topic right now. I don't know what's happening, but yeah, I please trust her. She knows what she's doing and the doctor is really good. Um, looking good this morning. Thank you, Shannon. Just this morning, remember, I, I got a shower. You know, it's that time of the month, so that's, that's why. 
I do have a sister, but she's in Yucatan Peninsula, so she, she's a psychologist. Hey Jenny, how are you doing? No, no problem. Okay, okay, okay. We are 34 people now, so we need to start uh, with our with today's topic. Huh. <laughs> so, um, well, where should I start? Hormones, hormones. Okay, some basics. Hello, Julia. Juliana Ann, good morning. Amanda and Carol, I think we're almost ready. I need to start with a topic, Trudy. I'm waiting because I'm sure the, a lot of people would like to watch this video live. I think the, the topics are really interesting. And yes, I'm gonna start hormones. <laughs> okay, you need, you're right. Well, we're almost 40 people now, so it's time. What time is it? I, I think we have. We need to have a, like a um, like a margin, you know, of wait, uh, waiting time, and uh, uh, we we have we need to have limits for that. Edna, how are you? And Beth. Okay, let's start. Um, Obesity definitely affects the female cycle, the female hormones. Uh, estrogen is basically made out of fat. And I mean good fat, I mean that the regular way you produce estrogen is through your own fat. So what happens when you have an excess of fat? That's right, you have an excess of energy, of, of um, estrogen. So. Um, if you have an, uh, an excess of uh, estrogen, at some point, <laughs> well, Jenny, you, you have a great point there, living, living. <laughs> women are always late, late. we be waiting all day, yeah, that's right. Hello, Joyce, morning, okay, again, let's start again. Uh, estrogen is produced from fat. When you have an excess of fat, you're gonna have an excess of estrogen. If you have a, an excess of estrogen, your body is gonna be unable to metabolize all of it and, and convert all of your fat to estrogen. So what's gonna happen with the excess of estrogen or the fat that can't be converted to estrogen? Well, your body is gonna convert it into testosterone, okay? Yeah, the, you know, men's or uh, male's hormones, you're going to have testosterone, lots of it. That's why people with polycystic ovarian syndrome are going to have a lot, you know, facial hair, uh, really thick uh, skin, a lot of troubles with the menstrual cycle, and they're going to be unable to get pregnant, or it's going to be really, really difficult to get pregnant, and they need some hormone therapy to, to be able to, to get pregnant. So, I know you don't want to be a man, but <laughs> that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying that you can produce an excess of testosterone, but um, that I think that pretty much explains why these ladies are having so much trouble with, uh, you know, and it's sometimes really thick facial, uh, facial hair. Um, you, you know what I'm talking about because this is real, it's no joke. Um, so what happens when you have weight loss surgery? What happens when you start losing lots of fat? When you are on ketosis? It's, well, common sense your estrogen levels starts to decrease, your testosterone levels um, start to decrease a lot. So this is gonna fix most of your problems, uh, not immediately, but in a couple of months. And I mean the facial hair and stuff like that, the, the, that's gonna change. But most importantly, you can actually get pregnant or uh, your, your cycle is going to improve because 
this is the thing. One of the problems because you can't get pregnant or uh, because uh, uh, one of the reasons is your endometrium is super thick, super, super, super thick. Again, um, the endometrium is the inner layer of the vaginal cavity and the uterus, sorry, of uh, the uterus. So when you have, it, and it's stimulated by estrogen. When you have an excess of estrogen, your endometrium is really, really, really thick. So, you have lots of vessels, you have the endometrium. When the menstrual cycle comes, you wash away that layer. But if you have an excess of estrogen, that layer is really, really thick. So, you get rid of the first half, let's let's say, I'm, I'm just guessing a number, but you get rid of the first half of the layer, but then you already are growing lots of it, so you, your endometrium is thick all the time, thicker than it's supposed to be. That makes pregnancy more difficult than, the, you know, when you, when the, it, it's more difficult to get pregnant, that's another reason. So what happens after you lose lots of fat? Again, estrogen decreases, Lots and lots and lots. So, your endometrium is gonna basically disappear. You're gonna wash it away com completely. That explains the horrible bleedings that you can have after surgery. Some of you are gonna experience, a, you know, really heavy bleedings in your men's cycle. A lot of it. I mean, really, really heavy. The reason I just explained it. You don't have enough estrogen to sustain, to keep that really, really thick endometrium. So in a couple of months, your endometrium is going to be regular size. That's going to help you with pregnancy. And that's going to modify your men's cycle. And at some point, you're not going to be bleeding a lot. So that, that's good, of course. You're going to be more uh, regular, more normal. You're, you're going to improve your metabolism, your physiology on that aspect. And something else, the same is going to happen for people that it's supposed to be a menopause, but it's not. Let me explain this. You are supposed to be a menopause, you are 40 plus years. It's different for everybody, but let's say 45 years. I'm not trying to, uh, you know, uh, to be mean with anyone, you know what I mean? But some people don't want to be in this uh, stage of their life, they don't like menopause and stuff, but okay, let's say 45 years. Whoa, 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 good morning, Dr. Arias. Welcome, I'm glad you joined uh, our conversation today. That's great. Um, Jeannie, okay, you're ready for menopause, okay. <laughs> so, this is the thing let's say you are 45 years and you are not yet on your menopause. That's because you have an excess of estrogen. It's like having a hormonal uh, replacement therapy, but like natural, because you have an excess of fat, you have an excess of estrogen, so you're covered. You, 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 your menopause is going to come late. Sounds like a good thing, but you know it's not. I mean, you can have hormonal replacement and be, uh, you know, uh, not skinny, but I mean, uh, you don't need the fat, really. You just need the hormones. So, um, you are 45, you have lots of fat, you have lots of estrogen, so you're not in your menopause yet, but then you have this amazing whale of surgery, you lose lots of fat, and then your estrogen decreases, as in the first stage we were mentioning. So, in your case, you're going to lose lots of estrogen, and then you're going to get your menopause, an acute menopause. Please don't blame me. I think it's a good thing. And you just need hormones to treat the symptoms. <laughs> so the thing is, some of you are going to experience acute menopause for the same reason that polycystic ovarian syndrome or other ladies are improving their men's cycle. Okay. So, um, I, of course, I believe this is a good thing, uh, no matter where you're trying to, I mean, for all these reasons, th this is okay. And one more thing that is really interesting about female hormones and whale surgery. 
some of you with polycystic ovarian syndrome probably had experienced a really painful ovulation because you have cysts so every time you ovulate you can have a rupture and that's really really painful because that cyst is going to rupture in your abdominal cavity and uh, the, that means um, after losing lots of estrogen you can have a couple of them you know breaking every I mean in one cycle you can have two or three cyst ruptures and in your next three four five six cycles you might have some ruptures I mean everything is it, it, you know it's an involution that that advanced problem it's actually uh, not probably you're not cured but it's improving a lot your ovaries are shrinking are getting the regular size so that that's that's um that's an improvement that's a good thing and actually i want to mention a case we had where this lady had a cyst rupture but sometimes those cysts are uh, nutrition by a small blood vessel so this cyst starts to bleed inside the abdominal cavity it took the, her, her doctors more than 40 er, uh, 48 hours to rule out the cause of the bleeding it took them 48 hours to discover it was in the sleep and this lady was a little more, over a month possible so i told her it's not just it's not the sleep it's been a month this is an acute thing and you have abdominal pain etc we were in constant communication the whole time i told her you are not as live you are not as live you're a person you can have any other problems like any other person so please tell them <laughs> to look for other reasons they did all kinds of you know nasa space technology kind of studies and uh kryptonite in your blood or whatever it is they did all kinds of studies and then they were like mm, okay it's been two days we have done 100 studies we can tell you something it's not this lead and they were like really <laughs> are you kidding me <laughs> of course by that time she was already getting blood transfusions and then they discovered it was a uh, cyst rupture so i I, I, I really I really want you to know you are not sleeps you are people and well basically that's what I want to tell you about hormones but there is one more topic of course pregnancy after I finish this topic I'm gonna start reading your comments and your and your questions it is live I promise uh, so it's not like I don't want to answer your questions it's just that if I start answering in real time you are gonna lose the, the idea so pregnancy I don't recommend you to get pregnant really soon because we are just adapting your body to ketosis. Toxin releases, it's, it's been released. Remember that the keto rash, and you can Google it, that exists. It's caused by the sudden release of lots of toxins. So you're going to have kind of, um, kind of a rash. Let me show you actually. Let me show you. It's like having an uh, uh, antibiotic intoxication. So you are releasing lots of toxins. You're having ketosis. I don't recommend you to get pregnant. Then you're gonna losing lots of weight. You don't know how your body's gonna adapt to the new weight and uh, how how you're gonna absorb or metabolize your nutrients. So I recommend you to get pregnant. You don't know you're going to have vitamin deficiencies, so I don't recommend you to get pregnant. And, uh, well, these are some examples of Ketorash. I'm sure you're going to be able, I'm sure this is going to focus. Um, uh, well, not even sure. Just Google it. Ketorash is real. Okay? It's, it's, it's like an allergy. Like, you know, you start having hives everywhere. It's like, I mean... Well, that, I don't think that that's Ketorash. That looks like 
Stephen Johnson syndrome. But well, whatever. The thing is, you are releasing toxins. You're losing lots of weight. You're just adapting. You can have vitamin deficiencies. Um, well, there are lots of reasons why I don't recommend you to get pregnant really, really soon. And uh, Okay, so let's start with other questions. I, I think that, that pretty much covers everything, right? Um, female hormones, men's cycle, oh, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, menopause, pregnancy, okay? We're going to talk about restriction and the uh, sleep stretching in a minute. Just let me check the questions. Um, I think, oh, Terry, I don't, you don't want to be a man? Okay, remember that, Jeannie. Mm. Through the man, you had an hysterectomy. You are taking estrogen. Mm. And uh, no, it's not going to make a big difference. I mean, uh, you might need to increase your dosage if you're having symptoms. So um, that's probably the only thing because you're losing lots of fat. You're losing, you're decreasing your estrogen. So you might need, I'm not telling you that you will, but you probably might need some uh, increase in your dose. PCOS been trying to get pregnant for over two years. Well, I can, this is another thing, uh, Elizabeth, I cannot promise you that you're going to get pregnant for sure. I'm telling you that PCOS and um, your uh, hormonal changes can affect your capabilities or, or, or can prevent you to get pregnant and that surgery and weight loss basically can help you to improve that, but it's not a fact. And the thing is, we have a couple of patients, uh, I'm not saying how many, but a bunch, uh, getting pregnant a couple of months after surgery, a couple, like literally two or three months after surgery. Some of them were trying, some of them weren't because it was impossible in the past. They have been without protection for a year or two or three, uh, we, without being pregnant, I mean, they, they, they don't get pregnant because they can't, so they don't care, they don't take care, and suddenly, whoa, I'm pregnant, you know what I mean? Uh, if you don't want to get pregnant after surgery, just, you know, use protection. Um, if you are trying, just give it, still give it some months, get, you know, give it some time for adaptation, um, I want your body to be healed. I want your uh, vitamin levels to be okay. And uh, give it some time, okay? Um, okay, we have lots of people from Texas. Actually, I think I need to do a seminar there. I'm going to gather some people there and I'm going to Texas. Because I think I have lots of people from Texas. Um, Okay, okay, okay. Keep keep reading. Um, yeah. Lots of people from Texas, I'm telling you. Sometimes six months without a period. Okay, okay. I'm telling you that you... I'm pretty sure you have... <laughs> my God, I got... Uh, my, my, my screen is floating with the uh, likes from Texas, I believe. I'm pretty sure. Okay, that's amazing. Uh, okay, uh, Charlotte, I'm sure you're having some trouble. If you do an ultrasound, you will find lots of cysts in your, in your ovaries, I'm sure. Um, and crystal, yeah, sometimes heavy cramping. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, things are going to change from now on. Oh, I'm sure you were talking to, to Charlotte. To, I'm not sure. Well, but... No, it doesn't sound good. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. How safe is to get pregnant after surgery? I think we covered that one. And, uh, okay, okay, okay. Morning. Hello, Kinesia. And, yeah. Uh, okay. 
having lots of questions and uh, greetings and stuff. Just let me let me update my. Uh, told you, Nikedra. Okay, you had your first period just after surgery last week, and it was so heavy. Now you know why. Again, truly sorry. I'm not sure if uh, if. Uh, if you got the answer, how safe is to get pregnant uh, or to get pregnant after surgery? It's not really safe. Give it some time. Remember, I already mentioned that. How much time? If you can wait a year, that will be amazing because you're going to be more adapt to the surgery in an ideal body weight. And then you're going to start gaining weight uh, because of pregnancy in a healthy way. So a year, I think, is perfect. Six months. They are, it's supposed to be safe and you're going to have at least two blood works in that uh, time frame. So we will know if you're having vitamin or iron deficiencies. Mm -hmm. Jennifer. What are my thoughts on endometrial ablation? Well, I want to know if you booked that procedure months ago and now you're losing lots of weight because you might need a new ultrasound to see if you need it. And again, I don't, I don't know if you need it for as a treatment or a diagnostic, uh, you know, kind of procedure. I don't know. So just... Uh, let your doctor manage that. I'm not the expert in that area. I don't know why you need the ablation and if you still need it, I don't know. Okay? Mm. I want to hear about lift stretching. <laughs> okay, Eugenie. Uh, we're going to start with that topic in a minute. The thing is, remember, it was divided in, in, two, in two main topics. And you have never been, okay, Charlotte, give it some time, give it some chance to the surgery, okay? Now, uh, okay, 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 okay. Not everybody gets this rush and... Uh, I do recommend keto diet, Nicole. Uh, actually, that, that's not what I'm trying to say. The concept is not based on the diet. But let's talk about that other day, other day please, because uh, uh, there's a lot of people waiting for our topic. But yeah, I don't think keto diet is bad. We will talk about that in other, other uh, another time. So. Okay, Cynthia, thank you very much. I'm gonna like that. Um, Beer control having this lead. Beer control, it's gonna, I mean, when you're about to have major surgery, it doesn't matter what kind, and if it's laparoscopic, even more important, you need to suspend your medication, your beer control pills, because that can increase the, the risk of blood clots, okay? Even though we're gonna give you blood thinners and stuff like that, and the surgery is just 20 minutes, whatever, Major surgery, major gastrointestinal surgery that lasts more than two hours is one of the major risks. This is 20 minutes, whatever. Um, laparoscopic surgery is another risk. Obesity is another risk. And uh, I mean, you're going to be laying down without moving. And if you add that, uh, if you add the birth control pills to these uh, risk factors, and well, you know, it could be pretty bad. Um, PCOS is polykistic ovarian syndrome, Julia. And again, I'm not promising you're gonna get pregnant with the surgery, okay? So, I'm not promising you that, but I can tell you it's much more possible you are, yeah, you're gonna improve a lot. And Crystal, um, not sure of that because I think that that lasts for five years, so probably you're gonna still having.
Well, that's it. No, n not sure. Not, I cannot promise. I mean, your hormones are going to change again. So probably the uh, uh, IUD is going to work even better, I think. But still, you, you, you take care, okay? Uh, I Nakog Duchess, okay. Hello, Joanna. Good morning. I'm a... <laughs> My goodness, you, <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna end this, so sorry if I don't answer all of your questions live this time, okay? We're getting lots of... No, I, I don't think I'm gonna make it. If there is any other interesting or important question, uh, it's gonna be addressed next week. Let's talk about restriction now. Uh, I always, always, I'm sure of it, I always explain this in the console, but I'm gonna tell you again. The sleeve gastrectomy is not a restrictive procedure. It's a metabolic surgery. We're going to change a lot of your hormones. We're going to improve your metabolism and your physiology. The stomach is made by three layers of muscle. Muscle is elastic. The body is going to adapt to the change because that's what the body does. The body is an amazing machine. It's going to adapt to all changes. This time the change is in the volume you are eating. After surgery, it's going to be one, two, three, four ounces of capacity. It's different for everybody. Please understand that the caliber of the sleeve is going to be the same for you all because I'm using the same bougie and I'm using that's the calibration device. Let's say this is your, 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 your stomach, okay? Well, now I'm going to calibrate it. So the caliber is going to be the smallest size possible, but that is still capable of letting you drink and eat. And then I am cut it. I do the stapling, and now you have your sleeve gastrectomy. We cut out the stomach, and your caliber is this. Okay, I always mobilize the bougie to be sure we have the, the caliber necessary. So all of you have the same caliber in your sleeve, but not all stomachs are the same. This stomach is four fingers in, in length, but another stomach will be six fingers, seven fingers, I mean two fingers. Some stomachs are really short, some stomachs are really large. So that is what makes the difference in the pass up in the immediate pass up capacity. That's why some people can drink two ounces and some people can drink three ounces because the stomach was larger or smaller or shorter. I mean, so again, that's the smallest caliber possible. The stomach is made by three layer muscle. Muscle is elastic. The body adapts because that's what the body does. So. With time and the gastric motility, because the stomach contracts for gastric emptying, with time, the body is going to adapt. And your sleeve, it's going to stretch. Whoa, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, I know, it sounds like a horror movie, but your sleeve is going to stretch. That is a fact, and there is nothing you can do. Okay? I need you to understand that. Your stretch is going... <laughs> Your sleeve is going to stretch and there is nothing you can do about it, okay? Nothing you can do. That's just an adaptation. That might happen in one year, two years, three years possible. I've done some sleeve to bypass revision surgeries. All of them looks really wide. That's because the stomach stretched. It's not related to, you, to the amount of food or the kind of food you're eating, it doesn't matter. You're not gonna stretch it with, with mechanical methods. You're not gonna stretch it with mechanical methods. It's just an adaptation that is going to happen. But let me tell you something, this is the good part. This is the good part. And this, well, I have a great example. Dr. Silly in the States proved he did the sleeve gastrectomy on rats. He proved that restriction doesn't last 
like a lot. Basically, it was a couple of days on these rats, and then they were eating as much as the rats without the sleep gastrectomy. So restriction is gonna happen for a while, and then you're not gonna have restriction at all. But you're gonna keep losing weight. That's what we call the honeymoon period. You're doing whatever you wanna do, but you're still losing weight. You're cheating, you're getting ice cream or something, and you're still losing weight. That's the honeymoon period. Because your hormonal, um, your, 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 your set point is being reprogrammed, your body's detecting the excess of energy and it's burning it. So it's a metabolic surgery, it's not your restriction. Okay, again, your sleeve is gonna stretch. Your restriction is gonna disappear. The bad restriction, the severe restriction is gonna disappear. It's gonna take some time. It could be six months, it could be a year. So, what's gonna happen to you? Well, this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna use the initial restriction. You're gonna use your amazing weight loss and your nice looks after you shrink and you are nailing these really sexy new dresses and stuff. All this momentum, this motivation, you're gonna use it to keep going and keep having a healthy lifestyle. You're gonna keep using it to eat healthy, to good, better choices of food. You're gonna use it to exercise because you don't want to get back to square one. You're gonna do it because you're motivated. You're gonna do it because you're committed. You're gonna do it because you're in this group. And remember that only nice looking people is in this group. <laughs> so you have to do it if you wanna be part of the group, okay? So that's why I do the support. That's why this group exists. That's why I do these videos every week. Because you need support, you need um, guidance. You need to learn how to eat and exercise properly. If you don't change your lifestyle, you're not gonna be successful on the long term. Restriction is not the culprit here. Don't blame it on the sleeve, don't blame it on the surgeon, don't blame it on the restriction, okay? You have to do your part. If you're disciplined, you're gonna be successful the rest of your life. You're gonna lose your weight, you're not gonna get it back. So please, 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 just do your part, exercise. I get this a lot, like, oh doctor, after a year I just lost 70 pounds, I have 40 more pounds to lose, 30 more pounds to lose. Oh doctor, I'm not tall, I'm not losing weight. Okay, my answer is the same all the time. Describe your diet, describe your exercise. And they are like, well, I'm eating pretty normal, three times a day, I'm eating, you know, um, sometimes uh, eggs and tortillas, and sometimes a sandwich, and whatever. That's not a healthy diet, and you know it. You are not exercising at all. You're like, well, I'm not really exercising. I mean, sometimes I go walking and stuff, and no, 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 no. You need to exercise as you mean it. You need to walk as you mean it. You need to sweat. You need to increase your heart rate. You need to do some weight lifting or something that makes you build up some muscle. Okay, so remember you have to just reset your, change your cassette or your DVD or your USB, whatever you're using nowadays, change your mindset, reboot your system, upgrade to a new operating system, whatever you want to call it, because you need to change inside, okay, it's not just the surgery, don't blame it on the surgery. And the same is gonna happen with the bypass, so don't let me start with that, okay? That, that, don't even mention it, because it's the same exactly. The pouch is gonna stretch, the intestinal vagosities are gonna grow. Again, the body is going to adapt. The, 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 the body is gonna adapt. So, even your malabsorption is gonna decrease a lot because your intestinal vagosities are gonna grow. So, the surface of absorption is going to increase again and the pouch is going to stretch. Again, the body is going to adapt, it's always going to find a way. 
And now I hope this is uh, I hope this, this this breaks the myth. There are lots. Of, you know what? It's been years. I, I've been fighting this theory for years and years and years. I'm glad Dr. Silly proved the restriction doesn't last a lot and is not really important in this surgery. So. Okay, now I, I'm going to choose some questions, okay? I'm not going to answer them all. And they have to be related to, to the topics. Dry skin, revision surgery, cysts, no camera, um, ablations. Multivitamins, okay, not, don't get me started with that, okay? The patches, I don't know, I don't, I, don't, I never use them. I'm not sure if they work. Um, I will definitely read all of your comments later. You have to go to, okay, okay, there's, oh. Oh, I, 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 I don't get this question. Women with PCOS have a much, much higher risk of blood clots, and I have that into consideration. Well, the blood thinners have a prophylactic dose. We are not using uh, high doses, or like we are treating a clot already, so it's not a high dose, and we use an exaparin, so it's... Um, Prophylactic, so just it's, it's for preventing the clots, but no. Uh, okay, the stretching. If you don't follow the 30 minute rule for waiting and drinking, okay, again, the stretching of the sleeve is not a mechanical thing. It's not like you're gonna eat a big, you know, like you do a big bite of beef. And you swallow it and now your sleeve is bigger than it was before it's not like that but just please try to chew a lot and take some time because that's gonna help you to learn how to eat properly and jennifer you're 100 fingers in line okay well i think i, I, I really I, I can tell there are lots of questions i think these uh topics were really interesting i can tell there are some interests here and uh, <laughs> you are all really funny. I, I love my family. Okay, that's a good question. No true demand. I'm definitely not saying it's better to have the bypass. Definitely not. That's not what I'm saying. Remember, I believe this leave is good enough. If you, the bypass, there is no question that it's better for diabetic patients on the long term and for people with severe reflux because I cannot promise you to fix your reflux uh, once I'm there because if you don't have a hiatal hernia or anything like that, I cannot control your reflux or, or, or improve it a lot. Most of the times people with, you know, some reflux are going to be cured because of the weight loss and because I dissect the esophagus, I fix the anatomy and because of the technique I use. So most of them are going to be cured from reflux. But if your reflux is severe and daily, I won't take any chances. I mean, if it were in your, in your place, I will choose the bypass because my reflux is daily. It's severe, it's affecting my lifestyle. So I don't want to get any chances, so I go for a bypass. But I don't really think it's, it's better than the sleeve. I think the sleeve is great for weight loss. It's, as good, it's not that I believe it. There are lots of studies that prove that the weight loss is basically the same and actually the sleeve is going to make you lose weight faster and on the long term it's going to be pretty similar. So I don't think it's, it's really better at all. And uh, and okay, I, I think this is gonna be the, the last comment I do because it's really late. 
Lakisha, you're telling me that restriction is what truly helps you early on. <laughs> I think that's questionable. Let's let's ask Jeannie. Jeannie is in the hospital right now. Well, she had a bypass, but it's the same for the sleep. It's exactly the same. And the ladies here are not, or the guys here are not gonna let me lie. Just ask the people that already had the surgery how hungry they feel after surgery. How much hunger they're feeling. Like, are you starving? Because you have been on the pre-op diet for a couple of days and now you're just getting liquids for two days. You're about to go to the hotel and yes, you want to have some chicken broth or beef broth, but how much hunger are you really, really feeling? And 99 point something percent of the time, they will tell you they are not hungry at all. And that's not due to restriction. It's because your hunger hormones are decreasing. It's because your metabolism is changing. So restriction for me is more like a, an excuse. You want to think it's a restriction. You, you want to think that there is a physical barrier restricting your caloric intake. So you're afraid to lose that barrier. But that's not the case. You just need to change your mindset. You need to follow a diet. Following a diet is super difficult because you're craving all the time. You're starving. I understand that part. But after surgery, there are going to be no cravings. You're not going to be this severe anxiety. So you're going to be super capable of following the diet. You know, as a soldier, you know, you're going to be disciplined. You can do it because you have the tool to do it. So. I believe this is a myth we need to debunk today. Don't think about restriction a lot and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you're not going to have restriction because you will. You will have restriction, a physical barrier, physical restriction. But that's not the point. That's not even important. That's, that's not necessary. Some of you, some of you are going to experience a hunger like feeling and that's the acid. Some of you are going to feel this void, that's the acid, you know? Some of you are going to have real hunger. Who cares? You're hungry, you eat. You're not hungry, don't eat. That simple, okay? Don't get afraid, don't be worried about ha feeling hungry because that's just natural, it's normal. So don't be afraid, just eat every three hours. Healthy food, healthy snacks, and that's it, okay? So. And uh, this question is, what do you do if you think your sleep is stretching? Well, you definitely don't do the reset your pouch diet or all that kind of groovy stuff. Like, oh, let's, let's reboot the system with uh, clear liquids and now your sleep is going to be super slim and tiny. No, it doesn't work like that. How much can it stretch? I will say, by experience, I'm not measuring it, I don't have the exact number, but I've seen it several times, and I will say that probably 15%. It's never going to be like it was before surgery. Okay? Never, ever. And one last comment, because it's too much. I, I need to go. I have some uh, consultations and stuff. This is, this is my last statement of the day. The stretching of this leaf means you can eat more. The stretching of this leaf means your gastric capacity is increasing. But the stretching of this leaf doesn't mean you have to. You don't have to. You can eat more, but you don't have to do it. You know what I mean? Yes, you can, but you don't have to. I mean, you can... You know, I can stab my hand with this fork right now, but I don't have to, right? It's the same. You can eat more, but you don't have to do it. So there are lots of things you can do right now, but you don't have to do it. So please don't, okay? And uh, okay, that's going to be it. <laughs> so I will read all of your questions, I promise. But... <laughs> 
And uh, well, <laughs> that was a great reaction. <laughs> and yes, I say it like it is. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Ginny and I have a really, really, you know, but like our sense of humor, <laughs> it's pretty much alike. So, well, family, it was my pleasure having you here. I think this uh, was one of the most successful videos. It's... <laughs> That's right, Jenny. Okay. Jenny and Ginny. Okay. Have a great Sunday, you all. I'm glad we were, we had more than 50 people today. I hope we can have more and more every week. Please, um, and please spread, spread the word, please, okay? Um, this week we're having two surgeries. I don't know what happened. Nobody liked this week. Remember, we had two cancellations and I offered their deposits and stuff for asset discount. I don't know why, but we're just having two patients this week and that's really sad. So, um... Please just spread the word and recommend us if you like our services. Now I sound like a commercial, but well, <laughs> I think, I think, I mean, this is the place for doing it, right? Asking help from family, I think that's the way to do it. So, okay, goodbye you all. Have a great week. Hope to see you next week. And uh, I think it was an interesting uh interesting video and uh, chat so love you all have a great week and Jeannie I'm gonna check on you later <laughs> just <laughs> let me catch up with all my duties okay and have a great week family bye bye <laughs>